This is the first lecture in module 5. In this lecture, first of all, we will discuss the voltage source inverter fed induction motor drives. In the previous module, we had discussed the variable frequency control of induction motors. In this module, we will be discussing how the variable frequency control is practically implemented. It can be done with the help of either voltage source inverter or current source inverter. So in this part, we will discuss voltage source inverter. First, let's see the uh, basic concept of VSI fed induction motor drive. A VSI or voltage source inverter converts the input DC voltage into an AC output voltage with variable frequency. That means the VSI provides a variable frequency output voltage that can be used to control the speed of an induction motor. And the magnitude of the output voltage of VSI is independent of load. Then the magnitude of output current depends on the type of load. Next, we will see how the circuit diagram looks like. This is the circuit diagram, basic circuit diagram of a voltage source inverter fed induction motor drive. In this uh, circuit, we can see that the input voltage is a DC voltage that is equal to VD and it uses six switching devices TR1 to TR6. Here, Instead of using transistors, we can use any other self commutator devices like MOSFET, IGBT, GTO, etc. according to the uh, power and voltage level. Let's see how it is selected. MOSFET is used in low voltage and low power inverters. IGBT and power transistors are used up to medium power levels. GTO and IGCT are used for high power levels. Next, let's see how the voltage source inverters are controlled. It can be operated as either a six step that is stepped wave inverter or a PWM inverter. Now, what are the effects of operating it as a stepped wave inverter and as a PWM inverter? If a stepped wave inverter is used, then the frequency alone can be varied at the inverter output. That means the six step inverter or a stepped wave inverter is capable of varying the frequency only. It cannot control or vary the voltage level or magnitude of the output voltage cannot be controlled. So for that purpose, we have to give a variable voltage input to the six step inverter. We will discuss this in detail. Next, if a PWM inverter is used, then both voltage as well as frequency can be controlled inside the inverter itself by changing the turn on and off periods of the devices. Next, let's see how the inverter operates as a six-step inverter. If we have to operate it as a six-step inverter, then uh, the transistors are turned on in the sequence of their numbers with a time interval of t by 6 if t is the total time period of one cycle. And the frequency of the inverter output is varied by varying the time period T. Remember, you have, we have to remember that the six step inverter is capable of controlling the frequency of output voltage only. If the supply voltage is DC, there are, there are two possibilities. The, either it may be an AC input voltage or a DC. If the supply voltage is AC, then we have to give 
a variable voltage supply or variable voltage power to the six step inverter so for that purpose if the supply voltage is dc then a variable dc voltage is obtained by connecting a chopper between the input dc and the inverter like this so you can see a step, six step inverter can uh, vary the frequency of the output voltage only so in order to get uh, the in, in, in induction motor uh, requires a variable voltage variable frequency supply for that purpose we have to give a variable voltage input power to the six step inverter so a variable voltage and variable frequency supply can be given to the induction motor for that purpose we are using a chopper here so fixed dc supply chopper the chopper will give a variable volt dc voltage supply and that variable dc is given to the six step inverter that will give a variable voltage variable frequency power supply to the induction motor then there is another possibility that the supply voltage may be ac if it is ac instead of using chopper we can use a control rectifier like this so here this is three phase ac supply so we are using a three phase fully controlled rectifier and the output voltage will be a variable voltage dc power and that is given to the six step inverter and it is supplied to the induction motor so induction motor will be controlled by v by f control so these are the two cases of six step inverter where a dc supply is provided and an ac supply is provided in both the cases we will get a variable uh, voltage variable frequency supply at the induction motor terminals so this figure shows the line voltage at the induction motor terminals line voltage one of the line voltages that is here vab is shown so v, vab the waveform of vab will be like this so here you can see it, the output voltage is a stepped waveform so obviously it will contain it will have a large amount of harmonics we will see what is the effect of giving a stepped waveform into the induction the, into the stator of an induction motor here uh, we have to note that the peak value or magnitude of the uh, line voltage is equal to vd which is the input dc voltage next the disadvantage of a six step inverter first one is as we have already discussed or mentioned the low frequency harmonics are more and hence the motor losses are increased at all the speeds and motor develops pulsating torques due to 5th 7th 11th and 13th harmonics next harmonic content increases further when the motor rotates at low speeds this will overheat the machine so these are the major disadvantages of using a six step inverter or a stepped wave inverter so in order to overcome these uh, difficulties or problems we can use a pwm inverter let's see how a pwm inverter works a pwm inverter the output of a pwm inverter is a variable voltage variable frequency that means the pwm inverter is capable of controlling both voltage as well as frequency within the inverter itself so these are the two possibilities uh, if the inverter has a dc fixed dc supply it can be directly given to the pwm inverter because pwm inverter is capable of controlling this fixed dc to variable dc voltage and uh, 
variable frequency. So the induction motor will be provided with a variable voltage, variable frequency power supply which can be used for V by F control of induction motor. Similarly, if we have an AC supply, then in order to give a DC supply to the PWM inverter, we have to use a diode bridge. We need not use any controlled rectifiers because the PWM inverter is capable of controlling the voltage level. So, only a fixed DC input is needed. For that purpose, we are using a simple diode bridge rectifier. This figure shows one of the line voltage waveforms of a PWM inverter output. Here we can see that it is pulse width modulated. That means the width of these pulses are different and the width of these pulses are decided by the uh, desired or required magnitude of the output voltage. So by controlling the um, modulation index as well as the frequency of switching of the um, inverter switches, the magnitude as well as frequency of the output voltage is controlled. But the most important thing to be noted is that the harmonic content in this voltage will be very, very, very less than that of a stepped wave inverter. So it has so many advantages. So these are the advantages of a PWM inverter for controlling an induction motor. Harmonics are reduced, low frequency harmonics are eliminated and the associated losses are reduced. Smooth rotation is obtained even at low speeds. But it is having a, a, minimum, a, a small problem. That is the motor current harmonics may cause torque pulsations and derating of the motor. So motor current contains harmonic. So in order to minimize the motor current harmonics, we can use an induction motor with high leakage inductance. Thank you.